But let me show you real briefly how I believe this mechanism fundamentally operates. Uh, we have the crankshaft where we have the connection points, the journals for the uh, connection rods and pistons. When you fire off your engine, this crankshaft is spinning. And remember on the R1 this, this year, the, the two inner pistons raise and fall together and the, and the two outer pistons raise and fall together. That spins the crankshaft. That energy from the crankshaft goes into a clutch assembly, which comes down here to the main axle. Or what I think the, fact, the factory manual calls the, uh, the main axle. Some people call the input shaft. That's because energy, rotational energy from the motor is coming in um, to this axle assembly. And you have a series of gears. Then we have another set of gears on another axle. This is called the drive axle. And the drive axle on the outside of the engine has the countershaft sprocket. Now, this transmission is a constant mesh transmission, which means these gear wheels all fit together and all connect at all times. It's not like this axle is moving back and forth across different gears. It's not. Uh, these gears are designed to mate together like so. And you can see, you know, bigger wheels on one side map to smaller wheels on another side. The trick here is that certain components on these two axles have dogs on them or pinions. And these components, one in the middle here, the third and fourth pinion on the input axle uh, slides back and forth. And on the drive shaft here, we've got a component that will slide back and forth here and a component that will slide back and forth here. And when that happens, when this third and fourth drive pinion engages the left hand side, it causes this gear to spin. Notice these gears on each side can spin freely about the axle. The only time they're going to be forced to spin is when this pinion slides over and connects and these dogs engage with one another or when the shift assembly moves this over and engages the gear on the right hand side. There's two different gears. On the drive shaft up here, same principle. You can engage the drive wheel on this side or this side using this shift assembly and then you can also engage this gear or this gear depending on which way this is being shifted. The way that these get shifted is through these shift forks. There's one that sits on the lower drive assembly right here between the third and fourth gear this third fourth gear pinion and then there's two shift forks that sit up here on the drive axle. All of these are controlled by this component we call the shift drum. And this is a cam actuated shift drum. When I click my outside shift lever, it causes this drum to spin. When this drum spins, these shift forks have a cam on the bottom that falls into these cam followers and it forces these shift forks to move right and left, all three of them together. And that's essentially how we get power out to the back wheel. Now, in terms of inspecting these components, I'll be inspecting the, the shift drum and the shift forks. I'll also be going through these gear assemblies. And as most people know, the 2000 and 2001 R1 transmission has an, a notorious problem uh, up here on the drive axle with the second gear and then the fifth gear pinion that connects to it. And that's because when we disassemble it, you'll see these dogs that fall into these recesses on the second gear wheel were not machined correctly by Yamaha, which causes them to be worn, uh, which causes this assembly to slide out occasionally, especially under power. All right, I'm gonna go through an inspection on my shift drum and my shift forks looking for any signs of wear uh, or problems. Uh, the first thing I'm looking for on the shift drum 
is in all of these cam follower areas, channels, uh, is there any wear, um, pitting, any marring or galling of the surface. You want this smooth, clean, and a quick inspection looks pretty clean. I don't really see any damage on this at all. I see a little bit of wear in the middle bottom of the channel. I think that's fine. I'm really looking for the edges and around the outsides. You can also look at the pins on the outside here. This looks fine to me. No surprise. I haven't been having any problem with shifting. Uh, any roughness or anything in terms of how I feel um, when my you know foot is engaging uh, the the external shift lever on the bike. So I think this shift drum looks perfectly fine. Now on the shift forks, uh, I've seen many pictures online on the R1 forum of damaged shift forks on bikes that are having all these second gear uh, type issues. And typically what you'll see here and what the factory manual says, is you want to inspect these outside surfaces and in particular up here these pads this is what fits down inside these pinion gears and you can see on this side it looks pretty clean there's discoloration uh, but I think that's because as these sit in the motor the oil level sits right here in the engine so this is typically sitting inside oil and this is typically sitting up above it this side looks pretty good. I see tiny little wear marks here, here, and maybe over here on the pad, but I, I, I don't think that's any problem at all. On the other side, uh, I see a little bit more. I see a little bit of shininess right down in here. Looks like we've had a little bit of wear here, but as I run my finger over it, eh, it looks pretty good. And up on here, a tiny bit of wear on these. Overall, I, I think this shift fork looks pretty good. Um, the other piece I'm looking at is the cam follower here. It should be smooth um, along the edges and this one here I'm gonna look at it under magnification but it has a pretty significant scratch on this side of the of the cam follower. It's probably gonna be hard to see in the video but um, that causes me a little concern on this lower uh, shift fork. So this one I'm gonna say is a little suspect. The combination of these wear marks and that pretty good gouge on the cam follower makes me think I might end up replacing that. I'm sorry, that was not the lower cam follower. That was one of the uppers. That was the right side upper cam, uh, upper shift fork. On the left side, uh, overall this looks pretty clean. Tiny little wear marks, uh, but really no significant damage. And... Again, the cam follower has a little discoloration. I'm going to look at it under a little bit of magnification and decide if there's any issues. There's, again, a pretty good gouge right across the side of the cam follower. That one's going to be looked at under magnification. Now, here's the lower shift fork. It's, it's a little bit smaller than the upper ones. And this looks completely clean. I really don't see anything all a tiny wear mark here. The cam follower looks beautiful no marks on it whatsoever this one definitely is good so a little bit of issue here um, judgment call I'll tell you right now if you ask other people's opinion one thing you'll find is other people are going to be really good at spending your money uh, even really uh, expert engine folks uh, they'll tell you replace everything well if the objective is to replace everything you shouldn't even go through this you should go buy a new motor if you replace nothing and you have problems, you'd be better off going on eBay and buying a crash bike motor. My objective here is to find a happy middle, to find those components which really are worn uh, and are going to create problems for me down the road, but live with components that really should have a lifetime greater than my life. And I'm going to I'm going to leave those be. So these are these are judgment call areas for me, um, and uh, you know it's a decision that I that I'm going to make. Uh, uh, component by component. So anyway, that's the inspection process on the shift drum and the shift forks.